Chase, another reviewer. Now, we've all played good games, and we've all played games that don't translate well into video games without slight modification from their tabletop ancestors. Today, we're going to be talking about the latter. Echelon Book 1, a fairly small initial release from Basilisk Games, describing itself as a classic 90s-style RPG made in... 2007. Well, there's no way they can possibly fuck this up. I mean, this genre has been well established by franchises like Ultima, Baldur's Gate, and Shining Force, just to name a few. Well, to make a long review short, they fuck this up, and they fuck this up pretty bad. Um, hey, at least it's better than Diablo 3. Why'd I say that? I like Diablo 3. This game sticks so closely to the rigid set of rules made up for a tabletop RPG that it makes it incredibly boring. It has all the gameplay and rules, but none of the heart and personality of having a good DM. Hits for no damage and misses are common during combat from both sides, and to make matters worse, the pace of gameplay is put at a setting below, flies fucking, with no option to adjust it. The story of this game doesn't really lend much to a good review. I mean, it's about as interesting as my last trip to the proctologist. Except, the last time I went to the proctologist, somebody's fingers got wet. Uh, maybe I should save that story for another time. Let's talk about character creation. There's just a lot going on here with this, this, and this thing over here. Hey, is that Bruce Willis? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Bruce Willis. I really don't understand character creation in this game, is when you can pick from pre-made character classes, but why have all this? If you're supposed to be able to create a custom character, then the way the attributes are randomly rolled makes no sense. It doesn't allow you to choose what rules go where for the class you want to play. It's all totally random and makes it hard to set up your character how you want them. And I still don't know what is regarded as a decent attribute setup yet. I still see the same hit for no damage, miss, and spells fail dialogue constantly. The worst part is, most of the attributes in this game are important for any character or playing style, which generally means it's going to be hard to create a unique layout for the specific type of character you'd like to use. And don't even get me started on the skills. No, really, don't get me started. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing here. I mean, I figured a game that offers three skill points per level and it's also the cost to gain a new skill might have a shallow skill pool. But as it turns out, there are some skills that continue to have improved effects all the way up to level 70. I will commend them on one aspect of character creation. You can choose from not only their race and class, but also their beliefs. This gives you an idea that this game is made to be played several different times in several different ways, which would be great if it were a roguelike, but it's not, so the game itself takes away from this feature. And I can only play as a guy? Where are the female character portraits? It's not like the plot relies on being a man in any fucking way. Okay, let's move on from this convoluted pile of shit to the next one, which would be the story. This game is intended to be a mystery that you learn a little bit at a time as you play the game. So I'm only really going to give you an idea of what's going on, then you can go play it and figure out the rest. Okay? C can you handle that? Is that, is, that, is that okay? It was a dark and stormy night when- ah! Is it gone? Jesus Christ! That thing reminded me of the demon from The Exorcist! Anyway, you find yourself in an abandoned and ransacked town with no memory of who you are and a note, instructing you to go to a town just east of where you are and that there's gear hiding for you in the backyard. Once you go to that town, which is called Aradel, and speak to Madoc, an old man, he tells you to open his chest, the treasure looky thing right there, for some gold and the next clue to your identity. This clue tells you that you need to seek out an amulet that belongs to you that was buried in a crypt nearby, then take it to a woman to identify it for you. Obviously, she's going to send you off to do another task, and there's more, but you can find out on your own since it's supposed to be a mystery. There's also an overarching plot that involves the people of the whole region of Thamor being at war with a race known as the Orichor that live underground. Because of the threat of war, all of the guardsmen were sent underground to fight, while a large group of goblins decided to take this as an opportunity to use magical portals to invade towns all over the country, apparently including the one you woke up in as it was completely destroyed. 
I don't want to give away too much and bore you with the details, but this is another one of those games that involves the all-important and holy MacGuffin. Your actions really don't mean jack, as this stupid, super-important item determines the ending. The pacing is slow. Really slow. The game plays out in turns. You take a step, attack, or use an item, and that's a turn. If you stand still, nothing else will move until you do, so your enemies are under the same rules. You can also choose to stand idly in order to get enemies attracted towards you. This was a huge issue for me, and there was no way to control how fast the turns go by. Would it really be too much to ask to have a fader to control the speed of gameplay? They add in a quick travel feature, but it's pretty badly done, and though it does help a little bit, it's no town portal. There are eight different locations you can quick travel to, but most quests take place in locations that aren't part of this quick travel network, and some of them are quite a ways apart. With no recall feature, this gets pretty tedious pretty quickly. The game even downright doesn't let you quick travel at all in about a third of the overworld. Don't get what I'm complaining about? Well, let me put it to you this way. You just completed a fairly difficult part of a quest, but you haven't completed the quest yet. You're out of potions, so moving on really isn't going to work out unless you want to keep finding places away from enemies and camp all the time. So you decide to rotate through the town so you can refill your stock of potions, which is fairly easy. All three towns with shops have quick travel points, so you just go around to each of them. But then you have to quick travel to the closest point of where your quest is and walk the rest of the way. The enemies don't respawn, so your way is clear unless you camp and spawn more, but that just makes it even more unnecessary for quick travel to not just work in all locations. The enemies don't come back, so the by-foot travel is there just to elongate playtime artificially. The worst thing the game does in regards to this is acknowledging that quick travel exists, when it doesn't allow you to do it for any reason other than enemies being close by because then it would have to explain why that's the only time your character can run, as the sound that accompanies quick travel is running footsteps, and why time doesn't pass when you do it. Another thing that bothered me was the lack of a party system. You're on this adventure alone, with no one to assist you, unless you lure enemies into town and let the locals bash them while you run. Fucking hell, even Fallout had a party system for crying out loud. No matter how terrible it was, it was still there. This would have been especially nice for areas in the game that required skills that you may not have had or may not have known you needed. The party character would have been able to use those skills and help you out. But instead, you had to delay your progress, somehow find enough gold, or level up and learn the necessary skill adequately enough to perform the task. Using weapons is impractical. Ugh! I don't think I have to explain this! I found out that my weapon skills finally became semi-useful once I hit skill level 10 with them and beefed up my dexterity. You need dexterity on every character. Every character. Take Brad Pitt here, for example. I can get over the fact that most of the puzzles in this game require you encounter a fork, where you can only go down one path because the other way is blocked. Then, once you unlock the other way, you have to backtrack to the other way and trigger a portuculus or find a key for a door that was blocking your way down the road you went in the first place. Uh, I can even forgive how easy it is to get overwhelmed sometimes. It just means that the next time you go through this, you have to plan carefully. This game isn't all bad. The graphics are good and the locations vary so that it doesn't feel like you're looking at the same thing over and over. It even uses fireworks to let you know your quests are progressing. The underground crawling locations differ to break the monotony, and I like the music a lot too, but the slow pace, extremely random nature, and the ridiculous difficulty is just totally unnecessary. I don't even find it to have the charm of a difficult game, because the difficulty of this game just feels deliberate and forced. It's only hard because the enemies increase in difficulty fairly steeply, or there are so many of them in one place, or they spawn right in your ass. And believe me, this game loves spawning enemies right inside your personal bubble. And then there are enemies that can only be killed in a certain way, or they will wreck your shit. Fucking poltergeist. Curses are a death sentence. Unless you want to hate life, don't choose to be virtuous. The day and night cycle is the most useless thing in the whole game. It's just there to trick you into camping until morning. But you always get surrounded and attacked in the dark, where you have difficulty seeing all the enemies. And by the end of the battle, you're usually worse off than you were when you started. So, putting this in to stop you from healing when you have to camp again to heal, only to be interrupted again, makes no fucking sense. 
Though this still doesn't justify the day and night cycle, because this happens during the day too. Again, this game is too fucking random. There's no reason for this to be a feature in this game other than other games have had day and night cycles, except in those games, there was a reason for it. The stores were closed, generally you're able to rest without being interrupted, and it doesn't take 30 hours to regain all your health. I'm not exaggerating! Even Castlevania 2 made it so stores were closed, zombies were in town, and enemies were tougher at night. It gave it a reason for it to actually happen! I guess nighttime is there to illustrate the flow of time, as well as allow assassins and rogues to, you know, sneak around in the dark. But for a game that advertises varying playing styles, they shouldn't have features that help a handful of characters, but are a huge hindrance to others. This game does give you a way around the night issues. If you're facing enemies in the dark, you can just hold the tab key and it activates a tactical grid that shows you where enemies are and how far away from you they are, so you can always see an enemy and you can disable your torch so they don't see you. This does fuck all for your weapons, since darkness hinders your ability to hit enemies, but if you're a magic user, just blast away and the monsters die with little to no resistance. And as for regaining your health and mana without camping forever, getting attacked, and being fucking worse off than you were when you started camping, you can just quick travel to the Inn in Aridel. Somehow when you rest there, you heal by morning no matter what, unless you're diseased, which is bullshit all in of itself. Diseases never go away. Never. Depending on what disease you have, and mind you, they stack, certain attributes decrease. You have to either have a potion that's too expensive, or go to a priest, which is too expensive. Still beats curses. Curses have no potions or spells I'm aware of to stop them. They cut your attributes in half, and generally this means you won't be able to move because your carry weight is half what it was, and unless you're running around naked with nothing in your backpack, you're carrying more than half your carry weight. I know you can get a curse cured by a priest because I've seen the dialogue option, but I've always been frozen in place by them and you can't just drop items to get cured and pick them up later because once you drop an item on the ground, it's gone forever. This game kind of feels like a Facebook game sometimes. You're limited by your resources as to how much you can play. You need to have loot so you can get gold so you can get the necessary potions and items to continue your journey. But you also have to wait for them to be in stock at the stores in the towns, or you effectively can't move on. You would think that you could just use your alchemy skill to make the potions you need to move on, but ingredients are so expensive that it just isn't effective. You would have to jack your mercantile skill way up to even make your alchemy skill worth it. That's one theory, anyway. Though I have more of a feeling that this game was made by a guy who loved the tabletop RPGs. He had maybe a Dungeons & Dragons group that would meet every week, and he would just punish and torture them through these quests. And they would just suffer the whole time. And he loved it. He loved it. He loved their anguish. He loved their pain. And he wanted to throw these unnecessarily hard campaigns at them. And then eventually they just, you know, stopped coming. And he'd, he'd get group after group of people to come play with him. And... They would just all, for some reason, have other plans on game night. And he just didn't understand it. And then when he ran out of people to play with, he decided, you know what? I'm gonna make a video game. That way people will acknowledge me. People will praise me. And people will finally love me. Well, to some extent, it worked. I mean, I don't know how. I think this game is atrocious. But people love it. It perplexes the shit out of me how it's even possible that somebody could say, just in passing, oh, uh, it's a good game, uh, outside of, like, just throwing praises at it like people seem to. I mean, there's been a sequel already, and there's a third on the way. This most certainly blows my fucking mind.